Today we're going to be talking about DoorDash, how much I made in 2020. I'm also going to talk about filing taxes for DoorDash. I'm going to talk about how I became a top dasher. I'm also going to talk about tips and tricks, how to make more money with your time. There are just some mistakes I was making uh, as a beginner just because I didn't know. Gwyneth and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about all things DoorDash. I actually don't know if I've ever talked on my channel about how I DoorDash, but I do. I am a college student and so I just have a really weird schedule. So DoorDash is fantastic for that and it just brings in some side income for me. Let's go ahead and get into this video. If some of those topics aren't interesting to you, I will just leave timestamps in the description box so you can kind of just jump around the video if you don't want to hear all of it. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So with DoorDash, when I signed up, one tip I do want to give is I do live in a college town, and so they were actually full for dashers here. But one of the cool things about DoorDashing is you don't actually sign up for one given area. I don't know about changing states. I haven't tried it in another state, but I've been, like in my hometown I've dashed, in Austin I've dashed, in College Station I've dashed, and you can just switch locations and pick up right there, which is so awesome. What I have to say about that is when I was signing up, it actually, I went off the zip code here where I live in College Station and it said it was full, which makes sense. There's tons of college kids here and all of them wanted Dash because you have your own schedule and you can make your own money and all that stuff. So what I decided to do is I actually put the zip code of my parents home and then let me sign up through that because they weren't full in that area. So if you are having a hard time signing up, just try a different zip code and most likely it'll let you sign up through that one and then you just change your location to where you are actually currently at and want to dash. Also, signing up for da DoorDash, I think it took a total of like 30 minutes from starting the process, doing background check and all of that, and then being able to dash. So it's really, really awesome. I'm a little torn if I want to like go ahead and tell y'all how much I made, but I guess I'll just go ahead and tell y'all because I know that's what a lot of you, a lot of you are here for. So first I want to say is I actually started dashing the first week of August in 2020. I had a lot of fluctuation, so DoorDash really is what you make of it. Usually I bring in about $80 to over $100 a week just dashing, just dashing for a few hours here and there throughout the week whenever my class allowed or when I have homework or if I wasn't with friends, just things like that. But then around Christmas time, I had more bills coming in. I wanted to get really cool gifts. And so I dashed a bunch. I think my highest week I made, I dashed for like 22, 23 hours total. And within that time, I made $445 around there. I tell you all this because my grand total for those five months was $3,419 and I want to say this to kind of keep it in perspective. I personally think that was a lot of money because I really was only aggressively dashing and dashing consistently for maybe four or five weeks of those five months. Other times I probably wasn't dashing more than... 12, 13 hours a week and I was still bringing in a good like 200 a week that I would say that was pretty good average and also I made that in five months so imagine what you could make the whole year. DoorDash is really what you make of it if you only want to dash to make $50 to buy the new pair of shoes or whatever you wanted that's perfect. Sometimes when I want to do a YouTube video I go dash and earn that amount of money I want to spend in that video first or vice versa I will see exactly what I spent to make that video and so I tried that weekend to really make sure I earned that money back. Also that is including the base pay as well as tips. Also keep in mind I don't get to keep the full $3,419. did have to do taxes and I know that is a concerning thing for some people so I'll keep it quick but basically um, you are a contractor for DoorDash so you they don't you know, take out taxes and stuff every week. Oh, also, they do pay every week, and then if you're past a certain point, you can actually do same-day payout if you need the money right then. Anyways, 
So because of that, you need to make sure you pay your taxes. You may need to keep some money aside to make sure you can cover your taxes. Luckily, I also worked a separate job this year, or in 2020. I worked an internship where I actually made a decent amount of money, and so I had a really high tax return, and so I ended up not having to pay any money into DoorDash because I like my refund covered that. Anyways. With taxes though, I just used TurboTax. I in total had to pay like $95 to TurboTax to pay for my refund. So the base one is free and that's filing your W-2s. Then the next level is filing as a business, which is what you have to do as a contractor. And that one I believe was $40. But here's the thing, it lets you file the income that you came, that you got, and tells you how much you owe in taxes, but if you want to be able to also include your expenses such as mileage or gas or even small things like a car amount to hold your phone while you dash or cleaning supplies to keep your car sanitary, if you want to put those expenses, which if you do guys, if you <laughs> do that then it will help reduce the uh, amount you need to pay in in taxes. So. If you want to do that, you will actually have to upgrade to the third level, which is the $95 that I told y'all that I had to pay. So you may be thinking, oh, I'll just file, <clears throat> I'll save $55 by just doing the second level of filing. Don't do it because you can actually save tons of money by putting your expenses. I highly recommend doing the 95 one. It's annoying at the time. I think it's necessary if you want to get the most out of your earnings from DoorDash. So the next thing I want to talk about is being a top dasher. So how you become a top dasher, I'm not sure how frequently it changes, but it has changed recently. So before, you had to have certain ratings, like you needed to have at least like a ratings of like 4.8 stars. Um, you needed to have so many deliveries not be late and on time or early and those are usually pretty easy to achieve. The thing for me that that pushed me into being a top dasher and qualified me to be one was a hundred deliveries in a month. So this is what I was telling y'all when I was actually aggressively dashing. I think I did like 200 da like delivered 200 orders that year or that month, excuse me. Deliver 200 dashes that month, which you needed 100 to become a top, da top dasher. So this was really exciting. I did that in November and I became a top dasher in December. And with top dasher, they say that there's perks to it. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I feel like they can easily say certain things, but it's hard to track. For example, you think with top dasher, you, if you're near a restaurant and so are other dashers, you would get the offer first because you're top dasher. That's not necessarily true. I'm not sure the algorithm behind it, but my sister also dashes. She's actually the one who got me into dashing because I saw how much money she was making. It was insane. Um, and so we actually were hanging out. Our cars right next to each other, windows down, just chatting one day while we waited to get orders. And she was actually getting pinged for orders way before me. Um, but that month, she wasn't a top dasher and I was. So I'm not exactly sure all the perks that they claim if they're truly being like put out into the system because I feel like it would be really hard for people to actually track it. But I also don't want to say that they're not doing, you're not getting perks because I feel like that's a big claim to make too just from my small observations my sister and I have made. But anyways, um, one perk I did get, I honestly thought this was kind of annoying, but... One of the perks I got, you know, because it was December, and so they were like, ooh, we're giving a gift away to all of our tar top dashers, and I was so excited. And then when Christmas rolled around, the gift they gave us was $5, which seems small, but, you know, they have a lot of top dashers, so I was like, wow, you know, it's probably a big amount that they really were giving out in total, like the company was. So, you know, money is money, I'm not going to complain. I got five extra dollars, and that I didn't have to dash for I went to go claim that money and transfer it to my bank account that week. I realized I misread the email and it was $5 coupon to order from DoorDash. Like that doesn't even cover the fees of DoorDash. Depending on how far you're from someone does, it doesn't really even cover a tip. Like 
I don't know. Maybe DoorDash heard me complaining because starting January of 2021, I was no longer a top dasher. So what actually changed, the reason why I'm not a top dasher, is they changed the rules to where all of the same things apply, but you also need to have an acceptance rating of a certain percent to be a top dasher. Now I want to talk about acceptance rating because that goes into the next section that I want to talk about, which is just tips and tricks to make more money while dashing and how to really utilize your time and to get the most money out of your door dashing shift. So I want to talk about acceptance ratings. I think it's worth not being a top dasher to be able to have a lower acceptance rating. All of your analytics and ratings, ratios, whatever you want to call them, there is a minimum to the level you need to be able to still dash except for acceptance ratings. All of your scoring and percentages and ratings are based off the last hundred deliveries so luckily you are not required a minimum for accepting I know a lot of people get scared about that but I've had my acceptance all the way down to like 21 percent so out of a hundred deliveries the past hundred deliveries I was offered I only accepted 21 of them and I wasn't penalized or at least it didn't seem like I was I mean my account wasn't shut off I wasn't given a warning or anything the only time that that comes into play that you're not that there is a threshold is if you want to be a top dasher. If you just want to be a regular dasher, don't stress about it. If if top dasher is a goal of yours and you can accomplish it, and you just so happen to be getting really great orders, I mean, go for it. I mean, go for it. But I personally, oh, sorry, there's kids playing outside and they're screaming. So sorry if you'll hear that, but I feel bad. The kids have been uh, cooped up in this cold weather lately, so. At least they get to go outside and have fun. Anyways, so that's probably my biggest tip of all the things with DoorDash. I say watch your accept, don't accept low orders. I'm convinced that when you start accepting those orders that are $5, $4, $3, whatever, that DoorDash somehow flags your account as being the dasher that will accept crappy orders and then that's all you get and you kind of just get into this rut of like, Okay, well I declined three of them, but that's all I'm getting, so is that all that's out here? I guess I'll take it. Don't fall into that trap, guys. Here's a rule of thumb I personally like to do. If it's lunchtime, the order has to at least be $7, including the tip. So the base pay plus the tip has to be at least $7 for me to accept, or I just decline it. And with dinner, it has to at least be $8.50, or I decline it. The ones that are $8.50, those are the ones that can actually go up if you deliver on time or earlier than the time that it says you need to get there. So there is potential for those to grow. Like I said, with lunch, people just don't tend to spend that much in comparison to dinner. They don't spend as much when they're at lunch. Most people are probably just ordering and trying to get you know, food delivered to the office or something, so they're probably ordering cheaper food. Um, they're probably only ordering one meal and they're probably only tipping a few dollars so that's why I set that threshold a little bit lower. The only exception that I have to this strategy of mine is if the order is like under two miles, you know, that's close. I still, I still probably want to do it if it was only three dollars. That's another thing guys, the minimum base pay that DoorDash for sure does is three dollars. So if you ever get an order that's $3, that means the customer didn't want a tip at all. Don't take those. I mean, even if the person is like a block over, you need to at least tip like a dollar. If they don't, I just feel like these aren't people who are going to be very courteous. They probably aren't going to give you a good rating. And they're, they're just probably not nice people. And if to them, it's not that big of a deal that you drove over, got their food, it's not that far to where they feel they don't have to tip at all, then the question can be asked if it's not that far why didn't you just go do it you know what i mean but yeah those are my main things is if it's under two dollars excuse me if it's under two miles i will probably accept it because you know it's just some quick money it's a quick five dollars i can make in like 20 minutes or something so i that is where i budge on my dollar rule another good rule that my sister taught me is it don't ever accept mileage that's higher than the dollar amount so for example at least have it one to one if it's seven miles away don't accept it for like five dollars or if it's or if it's like five miles away but you're only making four dollars don't accept it you have to keep in mind the mileage actually adds up on your car it does use quite a bit of gas I totaled it up and for door dashing in those five months I spent about four hundred dollars in gas 
Granted, that was my older car, that was a 2010. Um, it was a 2010 Volvo and it had a lot of problems and so it kind of guzzled gas a lot. If you have more of a fuel efficient car, maybe that's not a big concern for you. But I feel like people just think of DoorDash as just grabbing the food and dropping it off somewhere, but you don't think about the wear and tear on your car. Um, DoorDash pays more with bad weather, which I get it, but it's also kind of messed up. Like when there was crazy snowstorms and ice everywhere and bad pileups on the roads here in Texas and people were literally dying in car crashes from driving on icy roads, DoorDash was sending me notifications saying they would pay an extra like $8 per order if I would go dash in those, in that weather. And of course, in all of their terms and agreement, you as a contractor, like you can't, they can't be held liable for anything that happens to you or any wrecks or any collisions, nothing like that. They so just keep that in mind with what you choose to do. Honestly guys, I think that's my biggest tip to making money. Also just contact the customer. I feel like there's a balance of you don't want to be too quiet, but you also just don't want to be annoying. Personally, I don't message the, I don't text the customer if, if I'm on track and everything's going good. If I show up to the restaurant, they have the food before the time is needed, all of that is fine. I only contact the customer if there's an issue, if the food is delayed. Sometimes I contact the customer if I notice they're in a gated community. I'll just text them and be like, um, just want to double check I'm on the list. I have had one contract violation with DoorDash that I had to dispute because I got stuck at someone's community gate and the gate would not let me in and I got stuck there for like 20 minutes and the customer had to drive all the way up to the gate and so the app thought that I delivered 20 minutes late and I got like my first strike on the platform. So if you know the area well, just go ahead and send them a text to be like, hi, just want to double check I'm called in the gate, I've just had some issues at this gate before. Thanks. That's what I like to do. Usually they're really appreciative. 50% uh, of the time they reply, oh, thanks for reminding me, I totally forgot to call you in. So it saves your time, it saves their time, it makes everything just more efficient. You also need to keep in mind efficiency just while you are dashing. The more dashes obviously you can do in an hour, the better. I think if this helps you guys, um, depending on the area I'm in, so College Station is a little bit bigger compared to my hometown. My hometown is pretty small. So in College Station, I make about $15 an hour, maybe a little over, 15 to 18 I'd say is where I range. And it's because distances are lot longer, people tip lower because they're college students. I'm having to deal with apartments here which takes longer, um, just more traffic to sit through, things like that. So that really slows down your time, I probably can do like two dashes in an hour, whereas when I'm home, I can do like three or four because everything's really close. It's all residential and homes, so it's so much easier to just drive up directly to someone's house and drop it off at the door and run back to your car than deal with a complicated apartment and trying to get in. And by trying to get in, I mean those apartments that are like hotel style and they're locked from the outside. Those are very annoying and customers will insist that you bring it right to their door and knowing you have no access into the building, it wastes a lot of time. Some people are high maintenance. Um, but yeah, just be mindful of your time, be efficient. My last, I think, I think my last <laughs> piece of advice is if you know your area well and as you start to dash, if you consistently go to a restaurant that is always behind and just not good, don't dash there. Don't accept them. I don't care if they're like $15 orders. I wouldn't do it. Sometimes the reason they're so high is because all the other dashers don't want to go there because it's terrible. I have gone to certain wing places and had to wait 20 to 30 minutes past and what could have been you know, me making $7 in 20 to 30 minutes ended up being over an hour and then that whole hour of my shift like I only made $7.50. So you just have to keep that stuff in mind. I really like flag certain places and it varies from town to town. Some fast food places are really quick, some could care less. Also be weary of restaurants that don't actually have DoorDash. An example of that, at least in my area, is Whataburger. So they don't have DoorDash, but someone can order on the DoorDash site and I would have to drive to Whataburger, order the meal, pay for it with the DoorDash credit card, and then wait for the whole meal to be prepared and then take it to them. There's a lot of issues in this. I don't think the customer is aware that it doesn't function the same as it does at like 
a Chili's where the order goes directly to the, the restaurant to be held liable, but also you're having to sit there while the meals are ready. You're having to wait forever in line to order it, then you're having to wait forever for it to be made. Whereas other places have started making it way before you even accepted the order. So I just say avoid those because I feel like they just really take time away from you and it's not very efficient. Okay, I swore I had one more I saw I had one more piece of advice for you guys that popped in my head when I was saying the last one. But for the life of me, I can't remember it. So if I do, I will just comment it down below and pin it as the pinned comment if I do have any more advice. Or I'll just make a video too if you guys have any more questions you want answered. Um, but yeah, that's basically it for this video. Like I said, that's how much I made in five months. Very time, the beginning was really me being slow, and the last few months were me really being aggressive with it. Uh, the taxes aren't as scary as people make it seem, and the new rules of being top dasher, you really, that just comes down to your preference if you think the rewards are worth having to accept lower pay. Also keep in mind that there are deals they have going on if you do so many dashes in a month or so many dashes in your first time of being a dasher, you can actually get extra money and things like that. But anyways, I think DoorDash has been great. I will put the link down below if you guys want to sign up for DoorDash, tell them I sent you, and yeah, I think this is going to be a good year. I think it's going to be a really good year for all of us, so just get out there, uh, make it a side hustle, make it a full time, whatever you want to do, but it really is a situation where you can get, you get what you put into it. Just be strategic about what you accept, try to be as efficient as possible, and just be sure to communicate with people. <laughs> Alright guys, that is it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Also hope you like, comment, and subscribe down below, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!